For a lot of professionals, the idea of moving from one door to the other is the technological equivalent of a divorce. It's messy, it's difficult, and it can end in tears. In this video, I want to talk about the things you need to consider before you even go down that road. So you're thinking of moving DAW or DAW for short. Now this video is aimed mainly at professionals because professionals have some considerations that you don't need to worry about if you're not working in the professional audio industry. But if you're an enthusiast and watching this, but some of these will still apply to you. Let me say the first one. The first one you need to do is to consider workflow. Because if you, what we mean by workflow is that you have dependencies in and out of your work and that might be that you're a composer and you're having to send files out to, an, to another uh, mixer or your composer that's working with other composers. You need to make sure that you can still carry on working with the minimum of inconvenience. So that's why you see many people using Pro Tools. Whether you like it or not, Pro Tools is the industry standard. That doesn't mean it's the best. It just means it's the most likely one to see if you go into a post house in London or Hollywood or anywhere in the world, or it's the most likely one to see in pro studios. Again, it's not because it's the best before you start writing in the comments. It's because it's the most likely one and the most usual one you'll find, which means that when you come to share your work with others, you don't have to worry about making conversions. Now we have things like AAF, which is a, a file interchange format, which means you can save your Pro Tools session in a different in the AAF format, and that can be opened, but it's not an exact science by any stretch of the imagination. So an AAF might not do exactly what you think it's going to do at the other end in another DAW. We have things like XML, which means it, which is a, 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 another file format that means that you can do some exchanging, but it still means there's a bit of a pain in the ass at some point, either for you or for the person you're sending the work to. Now, if you're in a workflow where you've got people working in Avid Media Composer and post houses that are working in Pro Tools, then to get away from Pro Tools is quite a hard thing to do. And you need to consider that. It's not impossible. It's just the first thing you need to consider is there's going to be some conversion of files coming in and conversion of files going out because you can't put that on the other people using the, 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 the software that you don't use because that, that, to be honest, one, it's going to piss them off and two, it's, it's just not fair on them in the first place. So there's going to be that back and forth. So you need to think about workflow. Are you prepared to change your workflow or have a disruptive workflow moving forward or possibly, and I say possibly, losing clients because you don't use Pro Tools, for example, or you don't use Cubase or you don't use Logic. So that's the first thing as a professional you've got to think about is if it disrupts your workflow where you could lose work or it makes work much harder, then you need to think carefully. Because here's the truth about DAWs. They're really all the same. Okay, there might be something in Logic that you think is amazing you wish you had in Pro Tools. There might be something in Pro Tools uh, that Studio One users wish they had in Studio One or in Cubase that they wish they had in Reaper. They're, but they're all generally the same. For the nuts and bolts work of getting audio in and editing it and mixing, they're virtually the same, especially when you start using third-party plugins as well. So that's the first thing to consider is workflow. The second thing to consider actually is the whole compatibility issue, because not every plugin is going to work the same across different doors. What I mean by that is if you're working in Pro Tools, for example, and you use their Pro series of compressor and limiter and stuff like that, they don't exist in any other platform. If you're in Logic and use some of the Logic instruments, they don't exist in any other platform. And the same with all the doors. So you've got to consider, A, can you work without them? Or B, can you find alternatives? And how much do those alternatives cost? Second thing to consider as well is not all plugins, it's rare, but sometimes not all plugins work on all platforms. Not all AU and VST plugins work on AAX and not all VST platforms that are the plugins that were first developed for Windows are necessarily going to appear on a Mac. So you've got to think about that as well. While I'm talking about Mac and Windows, of course, if you're on Logic, or if you want to go to Logic, then you're going to have to use a Mac. That's the only way around it. So if you're working on a PC at the moment and you're dreaming of using Logic, then you're going to have to buy a Mac to use it. It doesn't work on a PC. The third thing to consider is the cost as a professional. Now, when I say cost, the smallest cost to it really actually is buying the new software. Because in reality, that's the least costly part of this process. The real cost of this process and the reason why most people don't move DAWs in the first place is because of the pain of learning a new DAW and the cost 
in terms of time to you as a professional. Now, if you're busy, it's almost impossible to do it because you can't find downtime to get from, let's say, I was on Pro Tools for a decade and then I started using Studio One. I actually use both now because both have features that the other don't have. And I use generally Studio One for music creation and I use Pro Tools for my uh, audio editing and stuff like that, or for mixing as well. It's just the way I like to work. If you talk to a lot of people, few people are just a single door user. So that's the thing to think about as well. But when I was on Pro Tools and start, started use, wanted to think about moving to Studio One, I'd been using Pro Tools for nearly 15 years. Now you don't go from being a Pro Tools user with 15 years experience to being another door user in days. It takes weeks and months to get up to that level. The same skill level you were on the one before, and that takes time. So if you're gonna do this, you've gotta do it in a downtime. Because it, and that's because every day you're not working, you're not earning money. And I've just, actually I was made a recent video about a video editor. So I was recently using, up until about a week ago, Final Cut for nearly a decade. And then I decided that I was gonna, I'd had enough for various reasons, and I've now moved over to, uh, to DaVinci Resolve. And I've got the basics, but it's gonna take me a long time to go from the speed I was working at in Final Cut to DaVinci Resolve. So that takes time. If, you're, if, you've, if, it's, if you're charging by the day, just, just factor that in because, and really the only way you can do it is when you've got downtime, because you can't afford to turn clients away while you're learning a new DAW. It's impossible. So you need to factor that in. So the three things you need to think about are workflow, plugins and whether they're compatible and third one the cost of learning a new door and the time associated this is why most people never do it it's just too painful it is like a divorce it's really really tough and really really difficult the final thing i want to say is that the reason a lot of people especially professionals don't move daws is they think it's impossible especially if you've invested 10 or 20 years of your career into using one daw but i want to say I did it after 15 years with Pro Tools. And this week I've been moving from Final Cut to Resolve for, for a number of other reasons. And again, it takes time, it's difficult. So there's a couple of things I wanna finish with. The first one is make sure, don't just ditch everything. Of course, that would be insane. You might need to pull backups up or you might need to pull old work up. And uh, you might not have to pull them into the new DAW that you're using. So make sure you at least keep uh, everything backed up or if you think there's gonna be some stuff you're working on soon, then make archive copies of it. And what I mean by that is print all the stems and print all the effects and stuff like that. It's probably unlikely that you'll have to get that extreme, but it's just a safety thing to do. The last thing I want to say is don't just buy a new door today. All of them are available for a trial period. And it's well worth downloading the one that you think is closest to what you want and then start trying to try it out. And what you might want to do is use them in tandem for a bit, is use your original one and, and then start getting used to the new one and make a transition at some point as a professional. That's quite a good technique to use actually, because then you can figure out how those workflows are gonna work and what kind of roadblocks you're gonna hit as you try and do this. It's never simple as a professional to move from a piece of software that you're so dependent on to a new one. It's going to take time. It's going to cost money. It's going to cost money in the time it takes you to learn it as well. It's going to be painful. There are going to be workflow changes. And the muscle memory of keyboard shortcuts, for example, are, are quite great on us as we've, we've had them in our brains for years, which reminds me. There is one last, last thing, is that the great thing about moving door these days is that most DAWs allow you to use the custom keyboard shortcuts from your previous door so you don't have to relearn all that stuff again, which can be one of the toughest things to use. Of course, also, don't forget about any associated thing like control surfaces. So you've got a Yukon connected control surface that might only work in Pro Tools, not necessarily, but it's a thing to consider. Or you might have a pre sonus control service that only works properly with uh, Studio One. You need to think about those things as well. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.